Hello, welcome back to another episode on Red Foxy. If you like what you see, please like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. My wife, 46, and I, 53, have been planning to divorce and rebuild our lives with new partners. We have been together for 22 years. We have two girls, the eldest, 20, nearly independent, and the youngest, 15, still in school. Our home is our family base, a platform, a place where we work, study and rest from the daily battles, have meals together at least once a week, cook, watch films, work in the garden, host dancing parties with friends, exercise, dance, cook marshmallows in the fire pit. Each of us have a separate bedroom. I work from home full time, the others partially. A home and being within a family environment is very important to me. So much so that I think that when we divorce and feel ready to find a romantic partner again, I will probably like to find a woman with kids of her own. My wife had been working with me for 1.5 years after she lost her job at the beginning of the pandemic. She now got a new job, is earning better and growing in confidence. She goes out a lot, loves dancing and socializing. We agreed that we would not stop each other from experimenting and looking for partners, as long as we don't bring anyone home. I can't just go out and have sex, not even paid for. I need to feel connected, mentally and emotionally. I am a cuddly person, she isn't. I like tantric experiences and intimacy, she likes it rough. So I have been blocking myself until the conditions are good and I can find someone I can connect with at that level while she is looking for whatever she wants. We grew apart and our differences became an issue for each other. We have several things in common, more importantly the kids whose happiness and wellness are our priority. This helps up keeping our roles as friends and parents civil and positive. We have moments of disagreement and arguments, which I do not enjoy and have a negative effect on everyone at home. We get over it, resolve or forget, then move on. We have been great parents. My wife in particular dedicated a lot of time and part of her career to the family. I have borrowed money to pay for training and always helped my wife to gain qualifications and study. She is a determined, dedicated and hard-working woman. A great person to build a life with. Shame we no longer have chemistry. I didn't want to separate. I thought we would grow old together. But the reality is that we have been physically and emotionally separated for too long. We like each other but have never been madly in love. The happiness of finding out we were going to be parents after only a couple of months together was overwhelming and blinding. I didn't work very well in our relationship and she wasn't able to provide me the affection I need. We have been discussing divorce for over a decade so it is certain. We agreed the girls had to be at least 18. I have been through grieving phases, and accept this is how it is going to be. The kids are growing and getting progressively autonomous. My wife growing in confidence but she's not financially independent and does not know very well how to work her finances, save money, invest, organize house bills, take care of her car. Yet. So I have been training her. Opened a joint account, put some bills in there, sold her last car that was in my name, and helped her to buy the next one in her name, carry out the negotiations, prepare paperwork and how to be responsible for it. This year, divorce laws are changing in the UK, and it will get less complicated to separate. We agreed to split all we have 50-50. The house, savings and investments. It is not much, and certainly won't be enough to restart debt-free, even if we buy two smaller flats. We need to carry on working, and both would like to have a small base where the girls can come back to, if they need. My wife and I want to remain friends. She wants to buy an apartment this year. But it is overseas in another European country. It seems that she wants for pave the way to eventually move there. I too wanted to have a base in a warmer place. I came up with the idea about five years ago, but now it has become her project, her obsession. For now it would be part rented out as a holiday, where we could go as a family or individually, and live for a week or longer in a different place, work from there, both our jobs can be done remotely. This would have been perfect if we were not gearing up for divorce. It is not a fantastic investment as we are likely to spend more than we will make in rent and the property market there is not as strong as in a big city like London. I like the idea of it, we speak the local language. Our oldest daughter has lived there on her own already and has just gone to be with friends for two weeks. My wife will go to another city next month looking for properties. Here's my challenge, how do I get what I need without losing too much of what I already have? The same thought goes through my wife's head, I am sure. She would have divorced already if she'd find someone to live with or if she could be financially independent. It is cheaper and more convenient the way it is, but it is not allowing us to get on with our romantic lives. I want a partner to grow old with until I die. A person to live moments, build memories, cuddle, learn, travel, enjoy life. To help other people, support our children, 
have sx as a consequence of being connected. To have new experiences and also sit together in silence enjoying each other. I am not being selfish, am I? Or is it the complete opposite and I am doing too much for others and not enough for me? I just want my soon to be ex and my daughters to be happy, healthy and fulfill their dreams, but I want that for me too. Right now, I am confused. The timeline is not clear. I plan to look for a life coach who can help me become more attractive to another woman. I want to lose weight, get my mind and life in order, so I can find my last partner and live happily ever after. Reader, how does it look from your point of view? Edit, you have given me excellent points. I have been deep thinking and started to discuss some of these points with my STBX. Thank you. Story 2. After 10 years of marriage I discovered the last 4 months of cheating, please help. I've been married for the last 10 years happily and after going out on a whim to look for a potentially silly response on a text message, I read through a text message chain on my wife's phone that I never thought I could possibly find on a million years. I am now just barely 48 hours after finding this out. I have the entire story typed out here but then deleted it. I don't know if that's really appropriate for this subreddit. Essentially I discovered that cheating has been going on for 4 months and included a 3 week flight over Christmas time to visit elderly relatives and catch up with friends but it in fact involved a lot of fking this guy. And that even just a couple days ago after propositioning me for sx she confided to her friend that she wished it was the other guy fking her and that she still loves him. My wife has borderline personality disorder and has been in severe depression and anxiety for most of her life including periodically feeling suicidal. The way that I think these events occurred was spending money and gambling and video games to try and feel some sort of high, then it transitioned to a relationship with this guy to try and feel some sort of high as well which allegedly turned to love. She had been enrolled now the past two weeks in a partial outpatient mental health program that is supposed to meet on all the weekdays but she hasn't had perfect attendance. Little did I know what the actual reason is for these extra suicidal thoughts the last month. I drove her to her appointment on Friday morning and then made the confrontation with her expecting a massive mental breakdown at which point walked her into the emergency room and then after many hours she was enrolled into the inpatient mental health program. I don't know what I want yet at this point. I only just discovered this subreddit and have read a handful of stories. Half of me wants to tell her to leave the other half wants to try and fix it, I don't want to be one of those guys that like some of the comments in these stories say they stuck around for 8 years and have felt like constantly on high alert constantly worried about deception constantly feeling like second best. Edit. She did tell me yesterday in the hospital that she spoke to a therapist about this 2-3 to three weeks ago and they were trying to come up with a plan to spill the beans to me while multiple therapists were present. Obviously I found out the information first. Edit 2. Edited the post to say the Christmas trip was primarily supposed to see elderly relatives with the benefit of seeing old friends, I'm pretty sure that the trip to visit elders precludes the cheating. However at some point the schedule allowed for penciling in some romantic destinations to have amazing sx. Edit 3. It seems like the guy has been ghosting her constantly the last 4 months but she kept pursuing him anyways. This was a high school friend of hers that she got drunk one night in October and reached out to after not talking to them in 7 years it seems. 